Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hey everyone, you're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Brickeen. Our guest today is Jace Lejeune, our editor for Louisiana Football Magazine, LAFootballMagazine.com. I want to mention before we get started with our show that we're working on our preview magazine, our 25th year. If you're a mom or dad listening, a grandparent, or just a sports fan for college or high school, people think it's just a high school book. We actually have all the 12 colleges in it. And also we have a big recruiting section, which is really hard to narrow down. Um, It's a first team, offense, defense, south, and north. We have a north magazine, a south magazine, a digital copy for each. Go to LAFootballMagazine.com and pre-order a copy. We can't tell you what day you're going to get it because we don't have the magazine yet. We don't even have it at the printer yet. So we're looking at mid to late August when we get them out. Um, They're not going to be in a lot of stores, so you got to get them from us through our site. Um, You can can get it from listening to this podcast. Just go to LAFootballMagazine.com. Our spotlight school today is going to be East St. John High School uh, in Reserve, Louisiana. they got a lot of good players coming back, as always. Jason and me are going to talk about the, well, man, the landscape of college football is changing. It's changing more than in my grass every day with the rain. Um, we're going to talk about all the, the SEC, maybe add in Oklahoma and Texas. They've also talked, I think, to Florida State, Miami, and Clemson. So it's getting interesting. We'll talk about that. We're going to talk about the Southland Conference preseason, all Louisiana team, and much more. We're going to have much more stuff here. Got some stats to throw out, too, as well. But let's get started. Uh, Before we get into the show, I want to thank our sponsors. I want to thank Medine's Collision Center on Kincaid Avenue. They're great people, family-owned since the 1960s. Call The number to call is 357-7983. That's local in Baton Rouge, 357-7983. If you need a paint job or body work on your car or truck, you need to take it to Medine's Collision Center, uh, Baton Rouge Auto Body Shop Experts. They've been around since the 1960s. Also, Treads and Care, uh, tire company on, i tell you what, man, Hooper Road. What a great place, Jace. Brand new building on Park Place Drive on Hooper Road in Central. Uh, Devin Holly's the owner. Um, he's been an owner of the tire company since 1971. Uh, they've been in business, family-owned, tires, brakes, oil changes, alignment, pickup and delivery. Uh, locally owned and operated, uh, all major brands of tires. I've done business with Devin for years. Great guy. Uh, the number to call is 331-8144. That's 331-8144. And John Harvey Toyota, our first sponsor and, and great people, looking for a used car or a new car. Harvey Autos has three dealerships, um, and they're just the people to call in, in Shreveport, Bozier. If you're going to buy a vehicle, you go to Harvey uh, Toyota, also John Harvey, Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Uh, they've got everything from fuel-efficient compacts, luxury models, even hybrids, and certified pre-owned with a warranty. It's a key to get that warranty, huh, Jace? And, um, and also, we want to mention, uh, we're just happy to be around almost two years now with the podcast and hope everybody out there is safe. Uh, hope we don't get much rain this week. And let's go ahead and get started with the show. Let's talk about the SEC. And everybody talked about it last week. I like to wait and sit on it for a little bit and think about it a little bit. Everybody likes to jump on it the first day. Um, Jace, I don't like the way things are changing in college football. Yeah, me either. I, I'm an old school guy. I mean, we're... You know, I'm in my 50s, you're in your 20s, so we're, we grew up in different eras, but your dad is a coach, you grew up around football. You know, I'm, you know, the, the there's so much changing, and it all revolves around money. Oh, yeah, like everything else. Everything is M-O-N-E-Y, and I guess it's okay, but the fans are the most important part of this whole piece. Don't you agree? Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, that's... Who get, that's who pays the money, right? Right, you know, that's who goes, sits games. in the stands, and when you watch TV, it's not empty. And you don't want it empty because it's bad for recruiting, it's bad for your school. And, you know, last year we saw a lot of empty seats, but because it wasn't full because of COVID. COVID right. And then a lot of people chose not to go because of COVID. 
And then this year, you know, we're all excited to see a packed stadium because the spirit of football outside of, you know, God and our family, I mean, that's what a lot of people look forward to in the South, especially Louisiana. And it's something I've looked forward to for, you know, 35 years now. So college football, high school football, but the landscape is moving very fast. Obviously, they're trying to have a super conference now after this imaging stuff and right. and all this other stuff we just went through about three weeks ago with college mm-hmm. athletics. The power conference is kind of like if you don't get in this one, if this happens, if Texas and Oklahoma join the SEC and they get this power conference, then it's really going to be strange in recruiting. Because then if Oklahoma and Texas comes in, and you're not in the SEC, the recruits are going to be like, well, it's like the playoffs, right? Well, if you're not in the playoffs, I don't want to go to your school. Right. Well, why do you want to go to Big 12 now if Oklahoma and Texas leave? And that's the thing I'm curious about because that's, the, that's pretty much – We're the hurting the re- tradition is my point right. of the conferences. If this happens, I mean, as far as power five, you're not, you're not going to have power five conferences anymore. You won't just have this big super power conference and then all the super five teams it seems like. And and it really hurts tradition, and it hurts. I mean, do you think anybody's going to watch Baylor and Oklahoma State now in TCU in that conference? They're going to be the big names, right? I mean, I mean it's going to kill them. And and then with Texas and Oklahoma leave. Yeah, I mean, who does the SEC have to play now to say you know, well, will Ohio State want to join the SEC? I mean, will Michigan want to join? I mean, is there going to be like thirty teams in the end, and it's going to be one conference, and then everybody else is just kind of like looked at as mediocre, I don't like the way it's going. And, and it's all about money because the SEC gets $68 million split just on TV. And that's going up. And if you looked at the Big 12, it was a little, a little under $40 million. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, it's money. Right. ADs are looking like, oh, man, I c- we can get another $30 million by joining this conference. Exactly. And then recruits in Texas – if you're at TCU now, you can't say, oh, we're going to play Texas. Well, no, Texas left your conference. Yep. Oh, you're going to play Oklahoma and Norman. Nope. You're going to play Oklahoma State and Stillwater. <laughs> Does that fire you up? You're going to play Kansas, Kansas State. Um, it's, I don't know. I. On the flip side, it helps LSU. And let me tell you why it helps LSU, because LSU recruits Texas. Mm-hmm. When all Texas kids now know all the Texas main teams are in the SEC, right. they're all going to play in the SEC. The guys that used to be Big 12 loyal, Big 12 loyal dads, their allegiances can go to the SEC. So now if it, you're LSU, you can go to Dallas. In Houston, recruit a kid that's not Louisiana Connections. Right. Because maybe Texas didn't recruit him, and now, okay, no, we want to be where Texas is at, and we want to be where Oklahoma is at. We're going to be in the Red River shootout in the SEC. It's kind of weird to think about. That's and then thing. Who's going to be in the West? Who's going to be in the East and all that? you got to well, find all that out, too. If, if it happens, it looks like it's going to break this week. But if it happens, it looks like, obviously, Oklahoma is going to be on the West or Texas. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll be two sides still. I don't think it'll be four pods like they said. I think it was the SEC Network that said that, like pod conferences. It's kind of weird to say pod conferences anyway. but Yeah, I mean, it seems like with this move now, it's just going to turn into this big super conference. Uh, I mean, as far as all these teams coming in, as soon as Texas and Oklahoma are going to want to do that, of course Ohio State and Clemson, like you said, everybody else is going to want to do the same thing too. So I don't know how – like, I, don't, I really don't like how this is heading. It's not heading in a great way for college football – a lot of people get excited and go, oh, yeah, we get Texas now. We get to play them again. No, nah, I think it's more than that. Uh, Oklahoma, I don't think Oklahoma and Texas coaches have a say in this, you know, because the ADs are making these decisions. It, it's about the money. But I don't think Oklahoma wants to play the schedule every year. They're going to now have be a three-loss team every year now, I think. Yeah, because if you look at the Big 12 the last couple of years, they always stumbled one game in the regular season in the Big 12. And then Texas, they, they haven't been in the conference championship in 10 years. And yeah. now they go in the SEC, uh, that's going to be pretty it's, tough. It's a bad Texas. move for them because 
You don't get a Kansas in SEC. There's no gimme wins. It wasn't like Texas was dominating the Big 12 the last couple of years. No. They moved to the SEC. I think they need to stay in the Big 12 and just be those two teams dominating it. Because let's face it, the Red River shootout, the winner usually goes to the conference title right, game. Right, it's usually either Oklahoma or Texas. Or and maybe every five years you see Oklahoma State maybe get right, there. Right. Kansas State maybe once every ten years. Right. I know Iowa State, you know, pumped up yeah. this year. It's supposed to be a really good team. TCU is kind of on the down end. Yeah, but they used to be. Used to be good. Baylor has had some years. Randa needs to win yeah. this year. Right. I mean, uh, the the, vaca- the vacation is over with for Aranda. Mm. Year two, if you lose eight games and go four and seven, no. Mm-hmm. Even Waco, they don't like four and eight. Right. They so. just need to show some sort of improvement, like the next step. Because the third year, two after this year, that's the year you got to prove yourself. So, year number one, course and saw what you got to do. Year two, try to improve. And year three, it's a – it's the money year. You got to show what you can do with year three. We're going to take a break when we come back. I'm going to talk about East St. John High School. Jace might have some questions for me. We're going to talk about the Southland Conference preseason defense and offense for the Southland Conference. Um, if you don't know the Southland Conference, McNeese, Nichols, Southeastern, Northwestern State, you know, the, and now some of the Texas schools are leaving and some are staying. It's going to be unique. We'll talk about that. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host. Our guest today is our editor, Jace Lejeune. Uh, we just go through talking about the power conference. I, you know, if it happens this week, it's, it's probably going to happen this week. You're going to hear about Oklahoma and Texas probably joining the SEC conference. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I really don't. It's, I think it's a money thing. They want that. They want that SEC split, and they're tired of being locked out of some of the playoffs. But if they think they're really tired of being locked out of the playoffs, they're going to have a tougher time getting to the playoffs now. Right. I agree. I was just based off last year, and it's. It's going to be interesting what this expanded playoff does and how they rely on that because even before this move, it looked like there were going to be two or three SEC teams in this expanded college football playoff already. But now the trend that is going with those teams going into the SEC, what does that mean for the other conferences now? The ACC and the Pac-12, what, what does that mean for them? So there are a lot of interesting moves you got to watch out in the next couple weeks. Now, legally, I think the state of Texas is trying to stop it with a lawsuit. We'll see how that works. It's all about money, too, you know, with lawsuits and uh, keeping them in the state of Texas or, in, you know, keep them in that conference. And, you know, Texas a and is not happy about this because the reason why they left the Big 12 was get out of Texas shadow, and now Texas is going to join the SEC. So, you know, that little brother Texas A&M is not going to be happy about this. I think it, it affects – Texas A&M more than anybody because they did want to be their own Texas school in the SEC and now the Longhorns let's face it if you're in the state of Texas there are more Longhorn true fans than A&M fans and they're considered the the number one state school school. yeah state school Um, I didn't say there wasn't any A&M fans obviously Houston has tons of them because it's close by College Station it's all about the geographics right of being near A&M but you get outside of Houston, you get toward Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, Richardson, Texas. Really, half of the state, a little over half the state, is true diehard Longhorn people. And it's hard for Texas A&M to recruit North Texas, like Fort Worth and in Dallas and Austin and San Antonio. That's that's Longhorn territory. And then Texas can go to Houston and grab players because again, it's the state school. But A&M. Uh, this could be the demise of Jimbo because, you know, he, it, I don't know if they would beat Texas and Oklahoma. Now. I mean, first of all, I don't think A&M is Alabama yet. No, they're not, they're not there yet. They're not even close. And they're not LSU yet. I mean, LSU's shown their, you know, um, what, three national championships in the last 11, 12 years, maybe? When you think about it, I mean, they did 
Somebody did this poll as far as like tiers in college football, tier one, tier two. They put LSU in a tier two, but they've actually won more national championships than some teams in the tier one, like Oklahoma. Oklahoma's only won one national championship right. since 2000. And A&M's, Texas A&M's never played in a national championship game. Mm-hmm. They've never been in the playoffs. Right. So, I mean, I think they were screwed out of the playoffs last year. I've got to say that. I didn't want them to get in, <laughs> you know, because – um, recruiting with LSU, but they should have probably been in the playoffs over Notre Dame. Yeah, I think they saw the Alabama A and M matchup, and the way the first time went, they didn't want rematch. Yeah. So I, that played a big part of why they didn't get. And it, the way LSU almost beat A and M this year with a horrible team was probably the reason they didn't put A and M in. N- they didn't really look that really. No. That, they didn't have a dominating victory or like. A, no, like Kellen Mond had a horrible game against LSU. Like, I would say their best victory all year was Florida all year last year. And that, that's pretty yeah. much about it. If LSU would have just had a running game, they would have beat A&M this year. Because the right. defense actually showed up in that game. Yeah, defense played well. And there were a couple plays, you know, missed you know, by LSU. They had some opportunities to make it really a good game. But let's let's talk about East St. John High School, Jace, the spotlight school this segment. Look Coach the talent they got. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's this has been going back since Lewis Lips played for the Steelers in Southern Miss. This has been going on since uh, Kirsten Pittman and Vegas Franklin. Uh, Vegas went to Miami. Kirsten Pittman went to LSU under mm-hmm. Saban. Right. Um, Ryan Perilou. Ryan Perilou was quarterback there. Um, yep. You know, this goes back to uh, Greg Gathers, who was all-time sack leader at Georgia Tech. They've had some special, special players come out of reserve Louisiana Brandon Brown is in his fourth year as the head coach. He's done a really good job there. Yeah, he has. He um, came from St. Helena. He he did a great job at St. Helena yeah. before there. And the guys that he took over with at St. Helena are going to be seniors this year. They're stacked this year at St. Helena. Um, you know, they've got a big senior group. They got a, they always have a good 35, 40 guys they can rotate. It's just a matter of where we St. John be strong. Will they be, you know, experienced this year? Well, they got a new quarterback, George Smith, who was a receiver, right. DB. Yep. Um, they got a good running game with Cortez Fisher and George Martin III. It seems like they always got some pretty solid running yeah. backs. Cortez is back. George is kind of new. Uh-huh. Um, they've always got big tight end H-backs. Yeah, they got Caden Henderson this year, Devin Davis. I like Kylan Harris. He's Coach raves about him. I watched him last year. Great playmaker, receiver. Yeah, Coach told me that they had 14 touchdown passes all year. He had 13 of them yeah. last year. So. Yeah, and he's 5'11", 175, maybe 5'10 and a half, but he's such a great playmaker, and he's he showed it every week, like you said. The O-line's always big at East St. John. They don't necessarily have D1 prospects, but they always have big guys, and Jamarian Irvin's back, uh, Michael Green, uh, Dante King's an undersized center. He's going to be, a, what, a three- or four-year starter yeah. this year. Um, 5'11", 240, but, man, he's, he's really got great feet. And their D-line's got a chance to be special. Um, and this is a D-line that lost a D1 recruit last year. Right. Um, Daryl Daig is a specimen, 6'2", mm-hmm. 3'15", D-tackle. Raquan Williams and Ja'Cory Robertson look like clones. They're both 256'2 DNs that are seniors. Heck, that's a that's a college D-line. That's <laughs> ULM of Monroe D-line. Right. And then you throw in Jamarian Zeno, who's 246'2, a young guy. I mean, in Jace, they got great linebackers, Freddie Jones, Elijah Frank, um, Jamin Grant. I mean, all these guys are over 195, six foot, six one. And their secondary. They have six DBs that are college prospects. And when you have that, that's what East St. John has every year. They have great skill receivers yep, and DBs. They do, every year. And they've got guys behind these guys. they got a guy named Mikey Brumfield, uh, Dwayne Brown, Delvin Brown, both corners, Jai Jones, Hanson Johnson, D- Demetric LaBeouf, and Elian Green is another receiver who's a punter kicker. But, you know, East St. John, typical East St. John team, size up on the O-line, Big athletic D linemen, linebackers, and great skill guys. Good, great athletes in the skill position. Not necessarily always a great quarterback, but always a great athlete. And I think George Smith's going to make a great quarterback slash athlete for them this year. They're one of those teams when the playoffs come, and you're like, they might come in a 20 seed or 19 seed, and you're a top five seed. Like, oh God, we got to play these guys. Yeah, I mean, so they were I mean, this definitely one of those teams out there, and they're like a get off the bus team that that plays the way they look. You know, some guys that get off a team, you go, man, that's a big team. 
and they just they play kind of lethar- lethargic. This team, this program, they're tough kids. And they're all, always at the end of the year. That's when they play their best. They might be a little shaky at the start of the season, but when that you know, November comes around, that's when they're playing their best football. I mean, they went seven and two last year. And they beat Woodlawn in a sloppy game. Yeah, it was that raining. Was the, that was the first round of the playoffs. A good game. I think it went to double overtime. Yeah. Something. It was a really good game. A lot of fumbles in the mud. I would say I, do, I would say Woodlawn might have won this if it was dry field. I thought whoever, when we were talking about it last year, Lee, I thought whoever won that game was going to make a really good run. And, yeah. You know, and then the next round, I believe they beat John Eric, who was a top yeah. two seed. So. I mean, yeah. I knew that either one of those two teams would make a run based off their talent. I mean, this is a team with 17 starters back, and they lost five college signees. Right, and two in the front seven. And yep. one linebacker to Baylor, yep. who I love. Right. Yep. I love this kid, and I thought LSU should have went out, but Dave Aranda's got an, an eye for linebackers. And this kid's 6'1", 235, mm-hmm. runs a 4'6", yep. played running back for East St. John, and uh, – you know, he's not going to be wearing purple and gold. He's going to be wearing, what, I guess green? <laughs> right. Right. Right, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of this kid that signed with, oh, Jackie Marshall. Yeah, Jackie Yeah, Jackie Marshall and I believe Will and Williams. McNeese. McNeese. Yep. I mean, they're special. And they're, their front seven's got a chance to be better without those guys. That's how good East St. John's going to be this year. And if they can stay healthy at quarterback, George Brown, a converted DB, they got a chance to be, they I don't can, know, man, this might be, be the year they get through. Yeah, they can be a contender for sure. Because Ryan Perilou, they never played in the Dome. No. Um, Lewis Lips, I don't think their teams, I, I don't have the history book in front right. of me, but uh, East St. John's had some great pro- teams over the years that just didn't make the state championship game. They've been so close. Like Newman, maybe, you know. Yeah. And some other programs right. that have never made the state championship game. This is the year for them, speaking of uh, being due. You know, Nelson Stewart and those guys with Arch Manning, this might be it. Right. You know, Peyton Manning never played in a state Peyton, championship game. Yeah, Peyton, Eli, Odell Beckham. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so they had some guys over the years that, that could. What took Jim Hightower, what, 29 years? Yeah, I was just about to say that. St. Coach Thomas Hightower Moore? took 30 years to, you know, really get where they're it's at It's hard. Now. Yeah. Frank Monica will tell you that. He played in several, but there's a lot of – Teams he had that were great that he couldn't even get there because of Curtis. Right. And think about it, uh, before the split, Catholic High had struggled. Big you know, time. Yeah, getting there, getting into the state championship. So It's going to be interesting to see what your Bears do this year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I agree with you there. Let's take a break. When we come back, let's talk about the Southland Conference. Jace did some of the play-by-play games this past year for Southeastern. And I watched a lot of them on TV. He was there at a lot of the stadiums. We'll be back with much more. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357-7983. That's 357-7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back. You listen to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm Lee Burkeen, your host. Jace Lejeune is my co-pilot today for the show. Uh, this segment, we're going to talk about the Southland Conference. A lot of these kids are Louisiana natives. Uh, the Colonels put 11 on the preseason team. Nickel State, that's kind of shocking considering they had a dismal year last year. Yeah, they did, but the talent is uh, – have you seen them play? The talent is They got talent. There. Yep, the talent is definitely there. And they lost their senior-to-be receiver in the transfer portal. Yeah. Who would have been the best player in the uh, Southland probably, but he yeah. bolted. I don't know where he decided to go. Uh, Dejon Dixon. Yeah, from yeah. Edna Carr. Yeah. All-time lean receiver for uh, Nichols. I hate to see kids do that. I mean, leaves a good team. I don't know where he's at now. I don't know. He probably landed in Nebraska or something or one of these schools. Um, so, Nichols has 11 on the preseason team, uh, six on the first team, five being offensive players. P.J. Burkhalter, Franklinson High School, O-lineman. Uh, Jared Joseph, uh, you know, a local kid from the home area. Uh, Evan Roussel from St. Charles Catholic. Yeah. Tight end David Mosley, a Rommel kid, Archbishop Rommel. Receiver Dijon Dixon, this was printed, and then he chose to leave. Um, Nichols averaged 48.7 points a game last year in a record 521.6 yards of total offense and still was not one of the top teams in the, uh, in the 1AA field last year. Kevin Moore 
is their defensive guy from Acadiana. Right. Um, second team, Julian Gums from De La Salle. I love Julian Gums, a running back. PJ KJ Franklin from Santa Mall. Yeah. Dantez Costley from St. Yeah, James. Yeah, good year last year. Um, I love Percy Gancy from uh, Jesuit yeah. defensive end. Right. And Hayden Shaheen, your school Catholic Bear yeah. linebacker. Um, you know, it's Cole Kelly comes back as the Walter Payton Award recipient. He's the Heisman Trophy of one double A. Sure. Yep. Your alma mater, Southeastern. And Southeastern. What do you think Southeastern's going to do this year, Jace? They have the talent just based off last year, and pretty much everybody's coming back. Uh, so this team should be the favorite heading to the Southland Conference. But my main concern is is the running game. They really don't have a guy because they lost two running backs. And so that's my main concern. The passing game is going to be there, but the, they have the chance to be the best passing offense in the Southland Conference. The, my ma- biggest question is, their defense. That's that's my big. Well, offensively, thing. you know, you got C.J. Turner back from East St. John yeah, High C. School. C.J. Turner's coming back. Austin Mitchell's coming back, and their whole Tim Wilson, their whole receiving core. Javon Connors, the only guy that really are going to have to replace in their tight end. But that's about it. Everybody else is coming back in this passing game, and boy, it's going to be scary seeing these guys back for another year. And you also got a great punter back, Austin Dunlap from North Shore High School. Yeah, they didn't punt much last year, but right. they did. Uh, he was booming them every single time. Um, freshman Darius Harry did good from East Jefferson. Right, and that's what Coach Selfo was, you know, concerned about was last year they got hurt a lot, and so they got a lot more bodies coming in. Nelson Jenkins is coming in to play this year a lot. So uh, From LSU. Yeah, from LSU. Oh, so if, he play, yeah. if he decides to play, if he decides to play. So we'll What's going on with the Plaquemine connection to Southeastern? You got Herman Kristoff yeah, there. Christoph. Uh, Brakeem Austin playing. Mitchell. Yeah, Austin Mitchell, Brakeem Wicks. Uh, <laughs> it's just Plaquemine connections. I, I, I joke with that all the time with uh, Coach Self. I said, Plaquemine, you uh, over there? And right. Uh, he said, yeah, we seem like we have a great connection with Plaquemine every year. They also had a great year from freshman DB that I love, Jake Jack Henderson from Mandeville. Yeah, he stepped up late in the year and made a lot of big plays for Southeastern last year. Uh, pro prospect Donnell Ward-McGee from St. Aug. Right. Yep, very um, talented kid. And Rendell, Miles, character, for an offensive Never lineman. Seen all. Yep. Yeah. Never seen all guy. Uh, Damian Dawson, tight end fullback. Drew Jones. Um, you know, it's a Jalen Bell, who's not a Louisiana guy, but did a good job on the O-line. Yep, he also probably the best defensive player in the country in FCS and uh, probably under Jordan, too. So, uh, he's definitely a good one. Uh, Cole Kelly threw for 2,662 yards, 27 touchdowns. This shocks me here. He had 18 passing, but at 6'7", 250 pounds, he had seven rushing touchdowns. Yeah. And they didn't really have, because of the running back situation last year, he was the guy on third and one to run the football because of how big he is. He's just another power, Tim Tebow power runner when he's 250 pounds. Man. So. And then you've got Northwestern State's got a preseason DB in William Hooper. Yeah. Um, William he's a pretty Hooper. good player. Uh, Nichols, we talked about. Josh Matthews from McNeese. Um, yeah. He had a good year. Receiver. He stepped up to be the number one guy for them last year. Rashawn Matthews, his dad, played at LSU and Southern. Right. Um, Northwestern State's Jacob Seal, an O-lineman. Scotty Robolo, who's a punter that we covered at Bird, is uh, coming back at Northwestern State, 6'5". Coach said that last year they they tried tried to do kicking and punting at the same time. This year he focused as, as a punter, and it showed how good of a punter he was just focusing on that position alone. Yeah, I mean, Northwestern State's linebacker, Jacoy Pugh. Well, their linebacking core <laughs> is, is, is stacked. I mean, there's a, this linebacking core, they probably could play Division One in a lot of – And then you got, coming back from Northwestern State, a Texas transfer, speaking of Texas Longhorns, Donovan Dunavere. Remember yeah. his brother ate yeah, LSU brother, up two years yeah, ago. Yeah, brother played at Texas, and his first cousin is uh, Kyle Murray. So, it's <laughs> some pretty right. good bloodlines there. Yeah, a lot of good players coming back in the Southland Conference. What do you think of some of these Texas schools not being in it anymore? Yeah, I heard that they're trying to, you know, they're going to a different conference and trying to expand a little bit. I'm curious about the schedule this year, Lee, because you know how the big rivalry is between Southeastern and Nichols? Well, this year, Southland Conference teams, because it's still the same similar type of teams, they have to play twice. So they got to do a home and home because so they're lacking those Texas lacking teams. Those Texas teams. So now like. Southeast will have to play Nichols twice, and that's going to be another added wrinkle. Manise will have to play, you know, UIW twice. So it's no Sam Houston anymore. Right. Yeah. No, I don't see Lamar in there anymore. 
I mean, it, this is – Yeah, well, yep. Yeah, because I called their last game against Southeastern in the Southland Conference. I was their last game in it. No more um, – what's the Texas school in Nacogdoches? Yeah, is that uh, – let's see. So, you got, you got UIW, you got uh, Houston Baptist. I'm trying to think of other Texas schools. You have Lamar. I don't think there's any other team. I mean, uh, I mean, half the Texas schools have pulled out, and it, this is the wacky world of college football now. It's the wild, wild west, man. Of uh, it's hard to keep up with. Everybody's kind of aligning, moving, changing. Now kids are getting paid. I mean, everything's going at one time. Do we have an NCAA right now? I mean, wh- what are they? I mean, what? Based off SEC media days, it seemed like that Greg Sankey was was the guy in charge, and <laughs> on top of this college football world, just. Hearing him talk and say, you know, I don't know what the NCAA is really doing right now. Uh, it's oh, Central Arkansas is another yeah, Central team. Central Arkansas, they yep. pulled out, right? Yep. Right, right. Yep, that's another one. I mean, I, you know, these teams need to think about their travel too when they pull out. All these are Louisiana schools. The travel's nothing, and then you go to another conference, another five, six hundred miles to travel. It's going to be more expenses. Yeah, I didn't really get the. Them leaving the South and Con- I didn't even really get the logistics of everything. Stephen F. Austin's who I tried to think yeah, of earlier. Stephen F. Austin. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think they left. Yep. Huh. Pretty much all the Texas schools in the South and Conference because that's what it is. I mean, Texas, Louisiana. That's Arkansas, it. I mean, that's besides <laughs> maybe a couple Arkansas yeah, teams. Central Arkansas. That's about it. Man, I just don't like the way things are going right now. I really don't. I, I, we I should think have it's a time machine and fast forward five years and see what the college. It's gonna be a mess. Like. It's gonna be a mess for the next year, I think, because teams are trying to desert conferences. Those conferences are gonna be now hurt. Now those they don't care about those other teams. They don't care about that landscape. Is the Pac twelve gonna stay together? Are they gonna go are they gonna try and combine with the Big Ten? I yeah. mean, it, what what's next? I have a feeling it might be like two or three just super conferences. And it's oh, I think it's got to. I mean, this is going to be a shift that really spills over to what happens in the SEC is going to change everything else. They're going to combine with each other. So you know. does the ACC try to recruit USC? Uh, does <laughs> <It's cool laughs> other schools Does Oregon try to join the Big, tw- I mean, Big Ten? I mean, what what's next? I have no idea with this move with this move coming up. I just I just don't know. The Pac-12 doesn't make sense travel-wise with any conference. Right, like the closest would be the Big Ten, but I mean that's no, still that'd be a long ways. I mean, California yeah. to Michigan. Right, but I mean it's closer than than to the SEC, and it's also closer to the ACC on the other side of the country. So, but would the Pac-12 want to play cold teams? That's sunny California right. and Oregon and Washington. That yeah. Well, mm-hmm. it rains in Oregon and Washington. Mm-hmm. But that changes everything for those kids. I, You know, the worst mistake I thought that Nebraska made was joining a conference that makes no sense to their state, the Big Ten. Right. Because they did have success in the Big 12. when. Well, look at their recruiting, Jay, since right. they joined the Big Ten. They can't recruit Texas anymore because – this has nothing to do with Texas when you go play Ohio State, Purdue, Wisconsin, you know, Northwestern and Chicago. There's no kids going, oh, man, in Dallas. I want to go to play in the, in the cold. <laughs> right, right. So Nebraska has never been the same since they joined the Big Ten. And Scott Frost, I love him, think he's a great guy. He played there. Mm-hmm. I don't think he can turn it around. I really don't. No, I don't think so. It's just one of those jobs that – I mean, it's gonna be tough. I mean, it's gonna be tough to anyway to go back to the Tom Osborne days. If I'm Nebraska, I'm calling the SEC, going, "Look, let me get in on this. We want out of the Big Ten. It doesn't fit us." My point is, look what happened in Nebraska. Could that happen to Oklahoma and Texas, where things have just changed fully, where their fan base doesn't even like it? Nebraska is not even a in the con- in the conversation anymore. They're not even no. recruits go. Who's Nebraska? Mm-hmm. And I grew up in the eighties oh, when they were like dominating. When they were Tom football. Osborne, and uh-huh. they had the best team in the country. It was either Oklahoma, it was Nebraska, it was Alabama, or Notre Dame, or Ohio right. State, or Michigan. Four the teams, right? Right. But kids today, they don't even remember when Nebraska won. Mm-hmm. Right. Not only did they win, they, they were. Yeah, dominating. you could say who's Tommy Frazier. 
Uh -huh. uh, you know, right. who's Irving Fryer? Who's Roger Craig? Who's Tom Rathman? Mm -hmm. Who's Dean Steinkuhler? I mean, who are all these All-American? Mark Bing, all these uh, – they don't know any of these guys. No. Not, <laughs> not anymore. So really think about what you're doing, schools. Please talk to your AD, it's, you know, because it's money, M-O-N-E-Y. And, and I think Texas and Oklahoma have the greatest situation right now. Whoever wins the, the Red River game goes to the playoffs probably. They're the face of the conference. When they go to the SEC, they're not going to be the face but of the conference. But they don't have anybody in the conference that can challenge them. And that's why Texas fired Herman because it's like, you can't beat Iowa State? You, you lose to Iowa State and Oklahoma State? Are you kidding me? It's been since – it's crazy Lou, that Texas has not won a conference championship since Colt McCoy was playing quarterback <laughs> for him. And that's like 10 years ago. You were in like elementary school or like, something, huh? Yeah, like oh, 10 years old. Right. You know, 11 you years old. You didn't have a driver's like, license or anything. No, yet. this happened way before that. So, I mean, you know, I'm just throwing out stuff in history, I mean, to make people think that's not in the newspaper already. Um. This will change. You, then, like I said, once this happens, then it's gonna. The other conferences are gonna. Oh yeah. Do right. it, and it's gonna be like you said. It's gonna be in like two conferences. Mm -hmm. Just two super conferences, and they're gonna battle it out. I don't, I don't know how they're gonna divide the playoffs and all that situation, but yeah, it's just gonna end up being two super conferences in the end. But I'm curious what's gonna happen with the rest of the Power Five schools. Are they gonna like? You know, because you got these other conferences like mm -hmm. the, the American, you got the Sun Belt. What are they going to do? Are they going to stay in their own conference? You know what? Try to move somewhere else? I think Notre Dame should join the ACC. Yeah, they, they should. But they're not going to do it. Right. They don't want to share money with anybody. And they play every other sport in the a ACC but football. It's a <laughs> private Catholic school, and they're not going to share the money with anybody. I would be shocked. They need to join the ACC. They really do. They would probably join the Big 12 before the ACC because it's easier. Oh, yeah? Can you see Notre Dame going to the Big 12? They dominate. <laughs> right. With no Oklahoma or Texas? Right. Because at least in the ACC, you move to the ACC, you won't have to play Clemson. So and I Florida mean, State, and Miami. Florida State, Miami, yep. And right. an up-and-coming North Carolina. Right. And Virginia Tech had some years. And, and Syracuse back. will give you a game. Mm -hmm. North Carolina State will give you a game. Right. Wake Forest is not that good right now, but – even the lower teams in the ACC will, you know, they'll give you a They're run. decent. They're, They're decent. decent. It's yeah. better than the Big 12. Mm -hmm. Kansas and, and <laughs> Kansas, Kansas State used to be good. Yeah. Coach Snyder was there. Right. Man. Right. Look at Missouri since they left the Big 12 and the SEC. They're not that good. And they beat LSU last year. Yeah. It seemed like it was a good move at first. The first two years, I believe they went to the SEC championship game. But after that, they haven't done much since then. And speaking of – Teams joining conferences and it's not working out great. Utah's really not doing great in the Pac-12. They can't get – and USC's down, and they still couldn't take advantage of UCLA and UCLA being down. Mm -hmm. Arizona State can't win in the back Pac-12. I don't think Herm Edwards is going to be there long. Right. I, this is a very important year for Herm. Arizona has went down the toilet, okay. Uh, it used to be Desert up. Storm. It's like, what? There's no Desert Storm now. Yeah. There might be a desert over there. <laughs> right. Remember they had this, the Desert Storm defense? I think ever since LSU beat Arizona, they haven't been the same. Mm -hmm. Right. But Saban. Right. Um, Washington, they just can't get over the hump of being a, a contender every year. And in Washington State, yeah, they lost their coach to Mississippi State. <laughs> Mike Leach. I mean, Leach had, had them rolling. They uh -huh. didn't win a championship. but it, it just They made, it, made the team interesting to yeah. watch. And Oregon State's been kind of down. Mm-hmm. And Oregon, they can't get over the hump. They'll go like 9-0 and and then lose their last three games every year. Right, yep. They, they can't beat they USC suck. at the end, and they can't, for some reason, they lose to somebody they're not supposed to lose to. I mean, really, the last six, seven years, the Pac-12 has been pretty weak. I mean, if you, th if you compare it to the ACC and the Big Ten, Big 12, uh, they've been the weakest link. They used to recruit Texas better. But the reason they can't now is because of all the shifting. Like I said, the Big 12 now, um, if if Oklahoma and Texas joins the SEC, the Pac-12 probably won't sign any Texas players unless they're like second-level D1 guys. Right, and that's crazy to think because back when Pete Carroll and USC were rolling, they, they did get a lot of guys from Texas to go over there. I wonder what Tulane and ULL is thinking right now. That's that was my biggest question too. What are some of these Group of Five teams are going are going to do now? Well, Fritz, 
try and get his AD to join the Big 12? Mm-hmm. Will ULL, who's got momentum, yeah. would they try and get in the Big 12? It makes sense travel-wise and where they are. Yeah, they're like the, the Coastal Carolinas of the world and the Boise States of the world. But Troy. The Troy's of the world. They're probably positioning to go, okay, once those two do leave, who gets those two spots? Yeah, the college – just basically, like from a year or two for, from now, college football is going to look a lot different than it is right now. Colorado should have stayed in the Big Twelve. Mm-hmm. They are not even on the radar in the Big tw- in the Pac twelve right now. No, some people can't even tell you what conference Colorado's in. That's how irrelevant they are right now. Mm-hmm. I remember when Colorado in ninety one were, were a national, national champions. Champion team. Yeah, with McCaffrey, the qu- the coach, yep, right. And had some of the best players in the country. Yeah, Cordell Stewart. Sean Salam was a Heisman Trophy Cordell winner. Salam, Darian yeah. Hagan was an All-American. Right. Alfred Williams and Canavius McGee that were from Houston. LSU tried to sign them, All-Americans. Dalton Simmons, whose son's now a quarterback yeah, at Country, country Day. Day. Yeah, yeah. He was an All-American there from John Arrett High School. Mike Phillips from John Arrett. Um, Colorado, Eric Bieniemy, you know, who had yeah. some – yeah, so he's he's the offensive coordinator for the Chiefs yeah, right now. Yeah, I mean, Colorado was getting the top players in the country for like five years. Again, if you ask somebody, most people will tell you, what conference is Colorado in? They don't even know. Mm-hmm. Right. You can fall fast. So, I mean, this is going to be – I think it's a bad move for Oklahoma and Texas. I think it's a good move for the SEC. Mm-hmm. Bad move for them, and I don't think it's good for college football. We yeah. need other conferences. We need guys to play in another conference that it's good matchups. Now, when everybody's in your conference, no, who's I the competition? Like and it's going to be, okay, um, what is it now, automatic? If we go 12 teams playoffs, six of them are going to be SEC? Yeah, half of them will be SEC teams. Yep. And then maybe they take some out of the ACC and some out of the Pac-12? Well, they'll probably take – Two of Big Ten. You know, the three super conference, they probably take two from the other conference and two more from the other conference and grab like a two two of like Tulane or, or Coastal Carolina as far as the other two left. I mean, that's what it seems like it's going to be. I really wonder, though, because, you know, Michigan recruits California really well, and so does Ohio State. They have for years. Mm-hmm. I wonder if those two would consider joining the Pac-12. Yeah, and then what happens to the Big Ten? <laughs> so it's you uh, forg- but again, if they leave, there you go. Mm. Then the Pac-12, the ACC, and the SEC become your three power conferences. Mm-hmm. Michigan, Tom Brady, where is he from? California. Yeah, right. Where is Ohio State's top players on their team? Most of them, or a lot of them, are from California. Yeah, and don't they have a good pipeline to Florida? Some of them that they've gotten over the years. Oh uh, yeah. They yeah. get one every now and then from Jacksonville or yeah. Tampa. Right. Ohio State does. Michigan gets some of the lower of level D1s, believe it or not, that end up being good players. But Michigan's all – I mean, something about the alumni. The alumni strong in California for Michigan and Ohio. Mm-hmm. That's why LSU can't go in there and grab guys out of California because the ones that do want to leave, their families are not from Louisiana. They're from Ohio. They're from, like, Michigan. They're from, like, New York, and they don't really want to come to LSU. Because I'm just being honest. When you get an Elias Ricks, that's rare. Yeah. I mean, he was the first bona fide top three player in the state that actually came to LSU. That's the first in, like, 100 years for LSU. With no LSU ties, I'm talking about, like, no family here, yada, yada. Sure. He knew Saban. I mean, uh, Orgeron when he was a kid going to camp, but still. Yeah, they showed a picture of him during the games right. when he was a little kid at the camps and everything. But it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. And then you know people like West Virginia, you know, in the Big Twelve. I mean, I mean, will they like take them out the conference for a better team? I mean, is it gonna be shuffling going on too with other teams? Will West Virginia be a Sun Belt? You know. You know, you shuffle cards. They're going to put all these teams <laughs> right. in the tech and shuffle. And it's like, all right, you're going this conference, right. you're going this conference. Who brings in money? All yeah, right. right. What's your fan base? All right, what's your ticket money? What is your – all right, that's what it looks like it's going to me. They might have me. a draft. They might just say uh, all the teams with Ohio State gets the first pick, which conference you want to go to. Uh, I do think I do think to end with this for this conversation, I do think ULL deserves 
if Texas, Oklahoma leaves, they deserve to be in the Big 12 as much as some of those smaller schools like Kansas and the other ones. And guess who made the Big 12 championship last year? It was Iowa State. Guess who yeah. beat Iowa State? ULL. ULL. So they deserve to be. And I think Louisiana there. Tech deserves a mention, too, as a possibility because they've had a great program yeah. in football. Yeah, Coach Holt's done a great job over there. And they've got history, Terry Bradshaw and uh-huh. Tim Retay, and right. They've had some great seasons. I think Tech would be someone to consider for the Big 12 also. Yeah. Could you see – I'd love this. I'd love to see Tech and ULL get in the Big 12, and then they have to play each other. Right? Get, yeah, it's true, because you don't really – you don't see them two play a lot or often. Oh, I, goodness. I, can't, I don't think I've ever <laughs> I've ever seen a game uh, playing with them two. Uh, we're going to take a break when we come back. Jace, just whatever questions you have for sure. me, we might can talk some MLB. Mm. I'm going to rat about a little bit of the MLB, MLB teams I've been watching lately, Anaheim, the Angels. I'm a big Otani fan. I'm a big uh, Mike Trout fan. I'm also a big Yankees fan. The Yankees just are just not that good this year. But we'll talk about the Astros and some other stuff. We'll be right back. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. The number to call is 331-8144. Family owned and operated since 1971. That's Treads and Care Tire Company. Welcome back to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Brekeen. Our guest in the co-pilot seat is Jace Lejeune. Here's a stat, Jace, that's very interesting. Here's some trivia for you. Okay. Name the longest tenured coach in college football in D1 coming back next year at the same school. At the same school. Okay. This is a tough one. Okay. Because I know some people would, would assume it would be Nick, old Nick Saban. But nope. It's not. Okay. Nope. All right. Well, Bill Snyder retired. Yep. You had uh He's cutting his grass right now yeah. probably at home. Right. Yep. This is a Power 5 conference school? Yeah. Huh. It's going to be tough. Okay. It's probably somebody I kind of wouldn't, wouldn't have thought of. Hmm. Longest tenured at one school. D1. D1. Okay. Power 5 conference. It's sleeping under all of our noses. A lot of people are not even going to realize it. It's a good little scoop for the show today. Okay. Gotcha. Have they been like relevant in the year, like past couple of years? Or uh, they're they've given LSU problems in bowl games, as a hint. In bowl games, okay. Huh. It's not a team I want to play in a bowl game. Oh, is it Iowa's coach? It's Ferentz. Yeah. Okay. Twenty three years. Yeah. Okay. Who would have thought? That was a good guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they call him No Frills Ferentz. Uh, twenty third year is the only head coach in America who's been in the same job since the last century. He's sixty five years old, and he's uh not going anywhere. He likes to fish, and they are not a team I want to play in in a ball game. No, they're always been that tough, hard nosed type team. Now, now give you problems. Here's some other trivia. Guess how many points LSU averaged a game they gave up last year. <laughs> uh. It has to be in the 40s, right? 34.9. 34.9. I think I was being generous <laughs> after last year. That's a touchdown worse than any LSU team on record ever. And they have to be better this year, and they will be. I saw an interesting stat from uh, – Did remember watching the Alabama Ole Miss game? That was just crazy. It was touchdown after touchdown last year. I heard if Alabama just played against air. At, at that game, they only would have gained only 35 more yards than they played the Ole Miss defense last year. So I thought that cur- that stat was <laughs> insane because uh, they probably could have just played against that air and done just as much. And here's a stat that a lot of people don't know in college football. It's kind of irrelevant because they just don't finish well. Oregon has won the Pac-12 the past two years. Really, a lot of people would know that. And they've underachieved because they had Justin Herbert and – you know, they had chances to... Mario Cristobal that. needs to... I mean, you know, it's a big pressure job. And, you know, he's looked at as one of the top seven coaches in the country. But if they lose big games again this year, they're going to be questioning how long he'll be the head guy. Right. Even though they've won conferences, they've won... This is a weak conference. They should go through the conference undefeated or one loss and be in the conversation, be in the playoff. And this is what I'm looking forward to. Cincinnati, Luke Fecal. Ooh. How good is he without... Marcus Freeman at D coordinator, who's now at Notre Dame. How good will the Cincinnati Bearcats be? They have them preseason number eight. That's too high to me. Mm-hmm. Putting Cincinnati at number eight without Marcus Freeman, 
That's a little high. Yeah, I I, I know you kind of go off of last year, yeah. what they did last yeah. year, but yeah, I mean it, it's a tough conference too. They got to play the UCFs and the Memphises, and I mean it's a tough conference over there. So we'll see what they what they do in that. My sleeper best player in the country, and I'm not a Notre Dame fan, just so people know. Notre Dame returns the freshman of the year last year in the United States. Kyron Williams, a running back, ran for 1,000 well, he yards. He He's from Missouri, year. by the way. Yep. Man, Mizzou screwed up not signing him. He's only 5'9", 190, but he reminds me of Kevin Falk. Yeah, he's good. He's one of the top young guys in the country. Florida, have they, can you believe the Florida Gators have won 29 games in three years? Yeah. I mean, I mean Coach Mullen's done a pretty, pretty no good job. No playoffs. Yeah. No playoffs yet. LSU and Georgia have been in his way in Alabama. Mm-hmm. And hey, A&M beat them last year. Right. Yep. That was their marquee win last year at A&M. And then LSU should have, should have been, you know, in the conversation of being last year, and they did. It's going to be interesting this year. I have Miami upset in Alabama week one. I have actually a couple of personal bets with some friends. Okay. and they, they think I'm cuckoo. <laughs> okay. But I watch Miami's spring game. Mm-hmm. And I know De'Aaron King's back, but they got yeah. two freshman quarterbacks that are unbelievable. One's Garcia from California, finished yeah. in Georgia. Right. Their defense is off the charts. Looks like the old Miami defenses. They got a big old – they look like the old Miami teams. Mm-hmm. Alabama's never played a tough first-game team. Mm-hmm. Right. And if that happens, if it's true, and I'm hoping because I want to win my bet, it's over a, a meal with a with a high school coach, by the way, in Baton Rouge. Okay, okay. Um then Alabama will have, for the first time, if they lose week one, that'll be something Nick's never had happen to him yeah, at I Alabama. Hope, I hope it happens. Uh, <laughs> but until I see with my own two eyes, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to go with Bama until they prove me otherwise. I'm not I'm not all on board that Alabama's quarterback is all that. I'm not either. but He doesn't have to be great, he I tell people. To, yeah, he doesn't have to be great to win games. They got an All-American O-line, five All-American running backs. And 10 All-American receivers mm-hmm. back. Yeah, It's a well-oiled machine. But here's the deal. If he does get hurt, we don't want him to get hurt, but they're going to be in deep trouble if he was to get injured because Paul Tyson, <laughs> Paul Bear Bryant's grandson, yeah. he's not ready to be the starter. Right. And Alabama's never really been weak at the number two spot at quarterback. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They've always had three. You know, Jalen Hurts bailed out Tua. Tua bailed out Jalen Hurts. Sure. Jacob Coker had a great backup. Right. I mean, McElroy had a backup. Right, and Coker was a backup to uh, – who was the quarterback that was really a running back? He came from Florida State. State. Yeah, right, right. But, I mean, there was always – a A.J. McCarron was a backup to McElroy, I yeah, believe. Yeah, Sims was, was the star in front of Coker. Yeah, Coker. yeah but so. they've always had two guys. Yep. Um, but they, they don't have that second guy this year. Yeah. And so um, – Young is the freshman from Modern Day Ray in California. Yeah, right. He's not a big guy. He's the smallest starting quarterback Nick's ever had. He's mm-hmm. right at six foot, maybe. 180, maybe. Tua was like 6'1", 220. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But 180 doesn't survive a whole season in SEC. That's not a big guy. Yep. And did you heard he got a million dollars already. And it's even, crazy. And he's not even – he's yet. not even uh, – a Heisman candidate or anything yeah, yet. Didn't even start a game in Alabama yet. What's that tell you? If you're the starting quarterback at Alabama, oh, yeah. you get a million a year in endorsements. And how is that much? I mean, are we recruiting at a high level? Tua would have made Tua would have made five million. Oh yeah, easy. Unbelievable. <laughs> any last thoughts, Jace, about anything else? Uh MML MLB baseball. Um I'm pulling for the Giants to win it all because Gosman's their ace pitcher from LSU. Mm-hmm. He's got a chance to win the Cy Young this year. We have a lot of Houston Astro fans in Louisiana. Yeah, they, they Alex Bregman, I'm looking forward to him getting back from the injured reserve with Houston. They're doing okay. Mm-hmm. My Yankees are really not doing well, even though DJ LeMay, who's not having his best year, he's batting around 270. He's usually like 310. Yeah. Can't stay that way all the time. Um, and Aaron Nola's doing great in Philly, but there's no run support. They have Bryce Harper. They, have, they just don't have, I don't know. I want to see Aaron Nola in Houston with the Astros before he gets to his 30s. Mm-hmm, right. Just have a chance to win the championship before it's all said. And the done. Dodgers look like they're a well-oiled machine. Tampa Bay's good. Chicago White Sox is very good. Tony La Russa is their manager, who's almost 80. Wow. 
Think about this stat, Jace. Before you were born, he was managing the Oakland A's, t- Jose Canseco in his prime, <laughs> and Mark McGuire. Wow. When Mark McGuire hit yeah. 70 home runs, right, yeah. Tony La Russa was the manager. Oh, okay. Some 40 years ago. Isn't that crazy? That is insane. And you got some good teams, some other good teams. Uh, Oakland's, speaking of Oakland, they're good. They're the nemesis to the Astros. Mm-hmm. And uh, San Diego's doing a good job. Uh, yeah. They got some great talent. And Aaron's brother. Yeah, Austin. Austin is with uh, San Diego, but he's been hurt. He's been hurt. He's coming back soon. I'm hoping that Mikey Matuk, who's in the minors with the White Sox, uh-huh. gets called up. Yep. He could be a part of a special team, and he's doing good in the minors. He has like 15 or 16 home runs. Mm-hmm. Josh Smith, your former yeah, my, uh, uh, classmate classmate yeah. at Catholic High, is tearing it up, I hear, in the Yankees minor league system. Yeah, he is. He's I read an article job. the other day. They said he's the third best prospect in their whole system. Oh, yeah. It won't be long well until he gets in the majors. I, pr- I predict he'll be in the majors next year. Yeah. And that's it hard to do long. as a second baseman. Well, I saw it firsthand when he was like in eighth grade coming out, you know, how great he was. As an but think of this, Aaron Nola, him, and our kid that went to Auburn, our friend. Oh, uh, ba- Bramer? Bramer? Bramer. Yeah. Ben, they're all ben teammates. Bramer. They all have a chance to be in the league at one time next year. Mm-hmm. And Ben's hurt right now, I think. He's in the minors. But he went. He was called up last year with the Nationals. Okay. Stevenson's with them, too, from LSU. Yeah, right. Andrews, yep. But that's a hell, heck of a Catholic high team. <laughs> yep. I mean, Aaron Nola, his brother, Josh Smith, Bramer. Uh huh. I mean, that's a heck of a and they're all in the major. They're all I think are all going to be in the majors next year. Yeah. Might be missing one or two. They didn't go to LSU. I think there's a couple other ones from that yeah, team. They, they had they've had some guys over the years. And uh, I really like the job Jay Johnson's doing at LSU baseball. He's already bringing a lot of excitement. Oh already. man, he's got he's got more pitchers coming in that can play than uh, than they had this past year. And they still need one more. I hear mm. they're trying to get one more really good pitcher that throws over ninety three. And if they can get one more, I think they're set. And they're going to have to actually run some kids off come fall because they they're over by nine players. Mm. Right now it's forty nine to forty forty nine in players. You can carry forty. And nine kids are going to have to go somewhere. That's tough, Jace. Yeah, that's that's really tough when you have that situation. But and this is another thing I thought about if going back to the football side of things. Uh, they the SEC quarterbacks this year. So you have J T. Daniels, Matt Corral, uh, the quarterback from Alabama, of course. Missouri's got a good quarterback. Yep. But those guys I just mentioned, they're all from California. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's because USC's been down so long mm-hmm. that kids are finally like. Heck, we my dad went to USC, but we don't want to go there. Because the coach has not been fired, but it's like they, they know he's going to get fired, so they don't want to go there. And they've had so many changes. So many changes. Like Kiffin, they've had uh, Sarkeesian. Yeah, I mean, Sarkeesian, I mean yep. there's so many coaches that just could not make USC go. I'm surprised Helton's as long as he's, <laughs> as he's been over there. And, you know, ever since their genius left to the Seattle Seahawks, yeah. They can't it's been a it's it's been downhill. Now you gotta look at LSU and say, you know, LSU's done pretty good since Saban's gone. Think about it now. Do you remember when uh when Wes was fired and then it came down to do we hire uh Tom Herman or do we go in house and Jimbo hire Jimbo and you know? And now Coach O's actually outlast him at LSU than Texas. And but Tom think Herman's out of Texas. But think of this, USC won the national championships. Their coach goes to the NFL like Saban, right? Mm-hmm. Carroll. Mm-hmm. Carroll. Yep. Pete Carroll leaves. Mm-hmm. He's like this god legend to the oh, yeah. USC fan base, right? And he's done a great job with the Seattle Seahawks, yeah. Yeah. thanks to Russell Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> right. But USC didn't come back with a national championship with two other coaches like LSU. Yeah. Miles won one. Mm-hmm. Ed Orsaron won one. Right. And people here complain because they just they're spoiled a little bit. Right. And they say, oh, we should have more national championships. We should have, like, five more. Well, look at USC, one of the great programs in the history of college football. They haven't won a national championship since Pete Carroll left, which was 
was 13 dur- years yeah. ago? And it was during that time. It wasn't like they're you know heading down and he took the job. And look I mean, at Michigan. Right look at Michigan. They fired three coaches since uh, since our guy. Um, Is it Rich Rod? No, Rich way Rod? before Rich Rod. Okay. Uh, Coach uh, Schembechler. Schembechler? Okay. And Schembechler didn't win a national championship. No, he that's he never won a national championship. But he was a great coach. He uh, pissed off uh, Woody Hayes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, look, Harbaugh's on the hot seat. Yep. But my my idea my my whole point is LSU has actually been able to win national championships even though the fan base didn't want to keep one coach in Les Miles mm-hmm. and half and some of the fan base is not really keen on the current coach some yeah right right it's it, well it's it's great to love LSU but I guess if you don't have fans that care that much it wouldn't really they'd be irrelevant too. Yeah, I don't know how many more fan bases out there care as much as it's football as LSU, LSU fans do. And A and M's the same way; they just don't have the hardware. Texas, I mean they have they have everything else but championships. And Florida, about. Florida's kind of um, they're angry their fan base because mm-hmm. ever since Urban Meyer left, yep, they are spoiled. Yeah, I the mean Tebow days and and all that. I mean, they are spoiled, spoiled, spoiled. And if 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 Mullen's a good coach. Yeah, he is. But if he doesn't win one this year or play in the playoffs, they're going to be just ticked off. They were mad last year with yeah, I think last year was more the bigger year for them because I know Tra- they Kyle Trask. A bit. Yeah, Kyle Trask. You had Pitts. You had Tony. You had all these guys. And, you know, the defense disappointed last year. At, at the longest time, if the defense was good after Urban Meyer, but they didn't have any offense. Now it's the opposite. The offense is great with Mullen, but the defense is falling off. So it's been one, one and then the Ole Miss is looking for more out of Kiffin this year, right? I know they. I mean, I know Ole Miss fans were pretty happy with last year, considering that hey, we played with, with Alabama. What more we can say? But I mean, this is a pretty important well, year. For I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna put this out there. And we've all talked to Arch Manning, and we've talked. I know teammates at Newman. I know Ben Bornelaw, son and Bo, and right. You know, we know we know Nelson Stewart. Mm-hmm. If Ole Miss was to some reason have a miraculous year, it could happen. Mm-hmm. Arch, Arch Manning could could be a rebel in the yeah. end because, you know, Archie, their grandfather, Archie he's big Miss. time yep. still involved with Ole Miss, Eli big time. with the Ole Miss. So. Well, they're still heavy in Ole Miss. But yep. if Ole Miss can if, – if Kiffin can show he'll be there, you know, you might see Arch end up going to Ole Miss. And the offense they play, I mean, that's I mean that's an offense he would definitely I think play. that's the school to beat the whole time. Mm-hmm. Everybody, you know, Clemson's they're, like the team that's – Yeah, they're talking about Clemson and Texas. but Alabama yeah, and everybody. Yeah. But I really believe in the at the end of the day, mm-hmm. if Lane Kiffin shows that he can get through this year, mm-hmm. you might see Arch uh, go to Ole Miss because I think Archie and all of them are just looking for stability at the school they love. Mm-hmm. Make no bones about it. I tell you, Lane might just hire David Cutcliffe just to have him over there <laughs> from Duke, know, and because he coached both Mannings, and is like, hey, I already coached. Yeah, they're friends with yeah, him. Yeah, uh huh. All right. I, I really think if all Ole Miss needs to do is just show that Lane Kiffin's going to be there for a while, and I think Arch would go there. I really do because the, 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 they're still Ole Miss passionate fans. Arch is still at most of the games. Mm-hmm. Right. He's still in the suite. He's still. I mean, that's no different than Billy Cannon, the late Billy Cannon, going to LSU games or. Sure. You know, all the LSU guys. So, um, and if they were to get Arch Manning, who? <laughs> the way the society's going now with kids falling quarterbacks, man. Imagine a couple of years you were going to see a guy like, uh, you know, it could be, yeah, uh, yeah, Arch, Arch Manning against uh, Walker Howard in a couple of years be LSU Ole Miss, you know. Yeah, those two are not going to the same school. Yeah. And they're friends. Right. Um, and I think if Arch goes to a different school besides LSU and Jimbo doesn't stay at A&M for some reason, Holstein could come back in the picture. I know not right now. We interviewed Holstein. Yeah. He's set to go A&M. But what I'm saying is a lot of things can happen yeah, to th- change things. Th- potentially a couple years down the road, three SEC starring quarterbacks are going to be Louisiana kids. You got Manning, Walker, and then – Yep. And and we got seven, eight more Holstein. North Louisiana coming up that are going to be starters in D1 ball. It's going to be like 13, 14 quarterbacks from Louisiana, 22, 23 class. There's like seven of them in Shreveport-Monroe for 223 that are big-time players, mm-hmm. quarterbacks. Yeah, 
Got and then you got you got Chris going to ULL from Madison Prep. He's all world. Yeah. He's a bigger version of Levi Lewis. Mm-hmm. And w- the key there is will ULL keep their coach in two years? Yeah. Will he stay? He's, he's already getting a bunch of – he already turned down some major uh, guys' uh, programs. But he knows that he wants to build something special at ULL for a year or two. Or if they can get in the Big 12, then I think he'd stay. Yeah, because – If it ha- if, if they get if they could get in. I mean, they can make him a throne in uh big <laughs> in time Lafayette right now with the job he's been doing over there. We're just saying possibilities, uh, listeners. If yeah. if Oklahoma, Texas do leave, which we think they will, um, will the Big Twelve take a ULL? Will it be Tech? Will it be Tulane? Will it be Troy? Will it be, you know, whoever? There's some good right. teams they might take. State up there too, and then done a good job, and yeah. So who knows? Coastal Carolina. Right. Coastal I would Carolina. think Coastal would join the ACC if they had an opening. Yeah. I would think the ACC would – that's their fit, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's on that side of the region-wise, it makes sense for them. Any final thoughts, Jace, before we go? Any? No, just uh, we've been working on the magazine pretty much nonstop, and uh, we're in the final stages of getting it, uh, you know, printed right now. But, yeah, we're looking forward to it. 25 years for you, Lee. That's, that's a pretty incredible uh, feat there. Still breathing, man. Still <laughs> breathing. My mom, Dolores Thompson, has been a big help all 25 years. Carl Accardo, our designer, yep. 25 years. You're going into year five-ish. Yep, fifth year. And we've got a couple of great interns, if you want to mention the interns. That yeah, Connor Shaw and uh, Jay Parker, both of them. I mean, they've, they've helped me a lot through this whole process. And Connor's from Dallas. Yeah. And uh, Jay is from Natchitoches. Yeah, his little brother's going to be a uh, starting quarterback this year. St. Uh, Mary's. St. Mary's, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, can't uh, appreciate more uh, from those two as far as what they were able to help us this year. They helped us a lot. And since we do this show, we got to get back to work on the magazine. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> as soon as we, uh, we're done recording here. I uh, want to mention, please go to the website, support the magazine, buy copies for your family, buy copies for your employees, buy copies for friends. Um, we can only exist if you support us because we're, you know, owned, family owned out of Baton Rouge. And uh, go to LAFootballMagazine.com. That's LAFootballMagazine.com to support and get a pre-order a copy. They will be out late August. Uh, we're going to the printer uh, middle of this week. They'll have it for a couple of weeks, and it takes a week once we get them. Mm-hmm. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you soon. Hopefully, I think we're going to have Randall Blue Gay, Jace, on How about uh, that? for Wednesday. Yeah, my dad coached him in middle school. Him yeah. And, uh, him and Norman Lejeune. Both Got middle a school. Super Bowl ring with the Saints, and uh, yep. we converted from running back to corner for Nick Saban. Yep. We're going to let him tell the story, and uh, he's an attorney in town doing a good job, yeah, Randall is. Gay. Yes. Um, really one of my favorite players of all time is Randall Blue Gay from Bruley High School. Yeah. Him and Norman were a great duo at uh, Bruley and LSU. Uh, We'll see you soon. We'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.